In today's video, we're going to talk about troubleshooting during Selenium testing. So troubleshooting is very important to set up and implement into your Selenium automation testing projects. And today we're going to talk about some common projects, uh, some common problems that you might face during your testing projects. So the first one is uh, sometimes you're not able to start your web browser in your test. And this could be caused by some a, a bunch of different reasons. Some very common reasons is number one, uh, your system settings haven't been configured properly yet. Uh, if you have a new computer, for example, uh, there might be firewall settings that you might have to adjust in order to allow the, your Selenium test to open your browser. The second thing is incompatible browsers with Selenium version. And this can often happen when you have, uh, for example, a newer version of your browser from an update, but you haven't updated your Selenium version yet, and your Selenium version isn't able to work with that browser anymore. And so ways to get around this is you can go and go to Maven and you can update uh, your Selenium dependency in your palm.xml file in your project that way. Some other problems is, for example, when you can't find a web element. And uh, this can happen, again, for uh, some other, a, major, a bunch of different reasons, again. And the first reason, for example, is you're just simply passing an invalid locator. You're not passing the right locator, so you can just go ahead and go back to your uh, website that you're testing for and you can expect and grab the proper locator for it. The second common cause of this is that your web element is not yet enabled yet when your Selenium program is looking for it. And so what I mean by this is, for example, um, this element might take five seconds for it to load up on the web page that you're testing for, but when you're searching for it during your program, the element hasn't come up yet and so the program can't find it. And finally, you might get some other issues, for example, I.O. issues and URL issues. And these are some other issues you might have to deal with during your Selenium automation testing project. And so some common best practices that people use in order to overcome these problems are, for example, first is to update your web browsers and Selenium versions very frequently. So whenever a new version for your web browser and Selenium comes out, you update it so they're compatible with each other and you don't have the problem of not being able to start your uh, browser. The second is to always use try and catch statements. And so right here, we have some bunch of try and catch statements that you can use. So the first one, this is to catch, uh, for example, when you pass an invalid locator, then you can catch it with the no such element exception. The second one is an IO exception. This will uh, try to, and this will catch any IO errors that you have. So with files and stuff. And the third one is just a general exception uh, for catching. And this just, you're just catching a general exception. And the last one is you're uh, catching an invalid uh, URL, for example, uh, and it'll give you the malformed URL exception error as well. And also, what you can also do is you can use Selenium weights, and this will overcome the problem where you, the web element you're testing for takes a long time to load, and uh, this will uh, help us circumvent the issue where um, when Selenium, your Selenium program is searching for that web element, um, it hasn't shown up yet. And so you can use a bunch of different Selenium weights to overcome this issue. And we have some other videos previously that you can visit where we talk about how you can use Selenium weights in your own automation test project. And finally, today's purpose of this video is we're going to talk about uh, and introduce this thing called Selenium Logger. And the purpose of Selenium Logger is to give you a little bit more information when you're trying to troubleshoot your Selenium testing project. And in order to use Selenium Logger in your own project, you're going to have to add this dependency into your palm.xml file. And this can be found on the Maven, uh, Maven website as well. And then you're going to have to include this line of code in your own project. And so this way you can get more information when any problems show up and it'll help you with troubleshooting your own project. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how you can use Selenium Logger in your own project. So first, I'm going to open up a website, and this is the Selenium Logger GitHub repository. And if you have any questions about Selenium Logger, you can go ahead and visit this uh, GitHub repository. And uh, this is what we were referring to earlier to add the dependency into your palm.xml file. And so the URL is up here. Uh, but yeah, so this first step, if we go to our, uh, our IDE right here, we have our palm.xml file. So the, we see that we added the dependency for uh, Selenium Logger down here. And another thing that we did in this project is we made sure that our Selenium driver was the proper version. So I'm going to go all the way up to here. And we see that for our Selenium, we use 4.17.0 version. And this is the most recent version we have at the moment uh, at the time of this video. 
And yeah, so that's our pomda.xml file, and that's how we uh, import the dependencies that we need. So now what we have is we have uh, building off of our previous videos where we have the controller package and the test package. Under our controller package, we made another class. And this class, we just named it logger.java. And in here, on the top right here, we imported a bunch of different, uh, different things that we need from logger. So right here, we see we imported uh, Chrome driver logger, Edge driver logger, and Selenium logger. And this is just building off of some previous videos. Uh, this project just builds off of some previous videos. So if there's anything else that confuses you, go visit our channel. We have some other videos explaining how we built this project from scratch. And okay, so in this project, we have three different, uh, three different in this class, we have three different methods. So the first method we have is book golf course. And for us to use Selenium Logger, again, we use Selenium Logger.enable, which I mentioned earlier. But what we also do here is we have, uh, we have to create a bunch of instances and configure it. So right here, we create a Selenium Logger. We set the level as warning. So if there's any warnings, it'll let us know. And then we uh, specify its output file as this text file right here. And then we say that you uh, will output your its results to this file. And then we perform a bunch of different uh, different commands and uh, we see what happens. The next we have is a test button uh, method and this method is to test a certain buttons on our website and this time in this one in this method we use a Chrome driver logger instead. And for the Chrome driver logger we see that uh, right here we are setting the instance for the Chrome <coughs> Chrome driver logger, and then we uh, we use uh, right here for Chrome driver logger all, and then we basically we set the level right here as uh, debug instead, and then we specify the output file here, and then we perform a bunch of actions for this button uh, test button method. For our final method, we use the search golf course method, and in this method we see right here we're using the edge driver logger instead. And then we're set it says uh, we're specifying its instance right here, and then we use um, set level as debug as well, and then we have our output file right here, and then we go through a bunch of different uh, commands so we can search for golf courses on the website that we're testing. And in order to test these three methods, we go to our test uh, package and we have this logger class now, and we see that we're testing for the three different methods in this class. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to run this run logger. And on my other monitor, it actually opened a URL right here, and it's going through a bunch of different tests. Uh, open another URL. I'm just going to drag it over so you guys can see what's going on, and it's uh, doing some stuff. And for the third method, it opened up another URL again. Uh, it performs some actions, and we'll just wait for it to close the page. So we see it's doing some searches on the website. And yeah, so once that's done, uh, you can go to the directory uh, that you specified the output file to be in, and you can look at what you have. So for us, we have our Chrome driver.log, our uh, edge driver.log, and our selenium-log files. And if I just open it up, we can see what it looks like inside. Uh, it gives you a bunch of information that might help you out when you're trying to debug your own project. But yeah, so that's Selenium Logger, and I hope that uh, this video taught you how to use Selenium Logger. If you found this video helpful, please give the video a like and subscribe to our channel and uh, stay tuned for more videos. Thank you for listening.